Hey, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at one of the uses of the in-plane masking feature to help deal with circular features in the source image. So here you see a little video clip from the Ninja Babe show from Impulse FX. And what we need to do is to track this logo here. So to do that, we're going to start creating a 3D planar tracker. We're going to set it to known aspect ratio. This is where we're going to be setting up something that we know that we've got a circle. So we're going to start laying it down in the scene, getting things roughly correct. And now we're going to bring up the secondary planar options panel. And I'll notice, I'll point out, if you've got a larger display on your computer, this planar options panel is going to be sitting underneath the main planar panel. But here for this smaller capture window, we need to keep it as a separate floating window. And that's what this gear button gets you. So on the planar options panel, we're going to use the in-plane masking and click this circular button. And all that does is quickly pop up a pre-built circle onto the mask. And now you can see the effect of the masking in the tracker mini view. And now we're going to go and start adjusting the position of the planar tracker in the scene to get everything to match up just right. So we're doing this really in the 3D environment using a known per perfectly circular feature as a reference. So as a result, we'll get the right orientation in the 3D environment. So different things I have available to help do this. Of course, I can just drag the whole thing around. I was using the shift drag capability to scale the whole pattern. And of course now I can start dragging the corners and for this it's going to be helpful to use the Alt or Command drag that adjusts not only the corner that I'm working on but also allows Synthize to cleverly adjust the other corners as well. So I just need to cycle through this a little bit to be able to make it so that it lines up all the way around using both the little tracker mini view and the main screen as a reference. So once I've done that, I've got this set up really so that it matches up with the circular feature in the 3D environment. So that's kind of a handy reference feature that you've got to help you get your tracker lined up in the scene to start with initially. And once I've got that all set up, now of course I can just track the whole thing through the shot. And you see there at the end it goes whoops right off the end. And it actually does pretty well. You can start to see in the mini tracker view that things are getting a little funky at the end as there really isn't too much left to track. And, you know, if we go look in the quad view, you know, we can see that as well. You have a relatively smooth path, and then at the end, it starts to fade off in a somewhat different direction. Because, you know, by the end, there, there just isn't enough information in the, in the image to be able to specify and limit the 3D position sufficiently. So... This is a handy little feature. Hope you're able to take advantage of it. Thanks.